found out my husband was in love with his friend. So I made her my best friend and now he has no one. Plus update. This happened a while back and names are changed for privacy purposes. All ages are at a time it happened. My female 27 husband, male 30, of 5 years, Steve, had a female best friend long before we met. We'll call her Amy. I met Amy pretty early on in the relationship and thought the girl best friend thing was kind of weird, but she seemed cool. I wasn't interested in a friendship between her and I, but I figured we could be civil. Steve had other friends, but more text every now and then friends. Amy was the only one he saw in person often. She even included me on activities occasionally movie nights at her house, or trips to the park, etc. I felt more secure because of how kind she was. The security washed down the drain every time it sprung up, though. Steve always looked at Amy in a way he never looked at me. He seemed so genuinely happy when she talked, more animated and excited, etc. He also tried to get me to cut my hair to be more like hers at one point, and dye it a natural color. Amy had shoulder-length brown hair, beautiful on her but not the look for me. I had longish hair that I frequently dyed fun colors. He would also drop plans with me at the drop of the hat if the opportunity to spend time with Amy came up. Not every time, but one that stands out from memory is when we were about to take a trip to visit my family. A full day trip if we don't stop anywhere on the way. And before we left, he texted Amy to see what she was doing that day. She said nothing, and he insisted we stop by to see her before we go. Amy did not know our plans. We ended up spending the whole day there, so I rescheduled my family visit. If I had been more vocal at the time, maybe it would have been different. But I didn't, and still don't, like arguing in front of people. And bringing it up in front of Amy felt mortifying at the time. I chalked it up to me being too self-conscious and over-worrying. Steve wasn't outright cruel to me or anything, but the little things and comments tore me down. This went on for our whole marriage. One night. Steve and I were drinking at home and watching bad Christmas movies, The Ginger Dead Man and such. I got in my feelings out of nowhere, as I often do when drunk, and asked him if he ever had feelings for Amy. He admitted to it, said he tried to get her to be with him multiple times since middle school and she always rejected him. I asked that if she wanted to be together, if he would want to be with her instead of me. He said something along the lines of, Stop making up hypothetical questions like that. That'll just hurt your feelings. I cried. We fought. I told him to leave and he called Amy and asked her to pick him up. When she got there, I, drunk as a skunk, went outside and in a not friendly way accused her of ruining my marriage knowingly. There was a three-way heated argument that I'm fuzzy on details of because A, I was drunk, B, even if sober, when I'm in a heated argument, I tend to erase things. And see, this didn't exactly happen yesterday. At the end of it, Amy ended up taking Steve to his mom's house. She came back to me sitting in the yard crying. This is already too long, so I'll skip ahead a bit. Amy knew vaguely that Steve had feelings for her but thought it was a weird crush that would go away. She liked me, but thought I was cold so didn't try to force a friendship. She didn't know a lot of the stuff Steve had said to me as far as comparing me to her and was angry about it when she learned. She let him know that she wasn't and never would be interested in him romantically. He said he understood. Steve and I then did a temporary separation that led to divorce. Amy and I became friends. She was and is a great friend to me, almost worth everything Steve put me through. She's the sister I never had. She is still friends with Steve, but in the text every now and then way. I'm more self-confident now. No real long-term relationship since the divorce, but now I'm invited to every movie night and trivia game and camping trip with Amy, so I'm not at all bothered by the lack of romantic partner. Sorry this was long. A little rushed at the end because I realized it was getting book length. Thanks for reading if you did. If you're married to a Steve, there are better things out there for you, darling. Now for the top comments before the mini update. Honestly don't understand why people marry someone else when they're in love with not a person they're marrying. Boggles my freaking brain. Glad you got out, Opie. Would have been heartbreaking at a time, but you got the better outcome with a trusty friend. Fear of being alone and having a placeholder. This was uplifting, surprisingly. So you don't feel bad for Steve then? I kind of feel sorry for him, but not in a way that thinks you should regret anything because it all happened very naturally. I just feel you can't help how you feel, but he was bad at hiding it, if he even tried. To put it the best way I can, the reason I don't feel bad for Steve 
is because I realized he did this to himself. I loved him. He didn't love me. I left. I'm happier now. Worked on myself and didn't stay miserable. He loved Amy. Amy didn't love him. He clung around and made not only himself miserable, but also me for a while. Did he say he didn't love you? Or did you just interpret his, according to your own story? Actual answer of, I've always had feelings for her and I'd want to be with her if we weren't together, as him not caring about you. I think a lot of people fool themselves into thinking they are the only one for their partner and then make rash decisions when they find out that they've fallen in love before. Everyone settles, and statistically, it's highly probable you'd be someone's first and only choice. But congratulations on letting jealousy for friendship that has existed for longer than your entire knowledge of this guy's existence mess up a marriage that, judging by your lack of complaints of the contrary, seems perfectly fine. Oh, and Amy is a horrible friend. I'm laughing at the y'all should be together comments because you kind of do deserve each other. I understand what you mean. And maybe I wasn't super clear. And maybe if I was, you would still have the same opinion. I'm not upset that he had feelings for Amy. Someone else commented and I agree I can't control who you have feelings for. But I feel the way everything went down. Marrying me without ever telling me he had feelings. Constantly putting me his wife on the back burner making me feel like a second-place trophy even before I knew about his feelings for her, trying to get me to change my looks to be more like her, etc. It was not how I deserved to be treated and was scummy looking back. If it was me today, I would never let any of that happen, let alone how long I let it happen. And if Amy had chosen to remain as close to him, I don't know if we would be as close. I want to say yes because of how we are now, but right in the middle of everything, I probably would have just called it a wash and not talked to her. If tomorrow she decides she wants to be close with him again, I wouldn't try to stop her. I wouldn't be around him, even if that makes me seem like a bitter child. It would have to be separate visits at separate times, etc. But I wouldn't want to lose her over it. Did I forget something and write this myself? Lol. I totally had an Amy in my life who was my best friend. Description of us matches perfectly. The hairdo, and I even cut mine to be like her. Unfortunately, my Steve ran away with her after having an affair for like most of our seven year relationship. LMAO. She turned out to be a massive jerk to me near the end. Neither of them have friends because of what they did. Maybe like two, but they are also crappy people. I found a gaslighting and the there's nothing going on between us. Why would you think that? Why would you ask something that'll hurt you? Type answer is the freaking worst. I legit thought I was making the whole thing up and delusional to the point he had schizophrenia as it runs to the family. His friends even got in on it and had his back. Glad he dodged that one. Glad it worked out with you and your Amy. And now for the update. Before the main update, I would like to say thank you to all the supportive comments. And also, I am sorry to anyone with a Steve in their lives and proud of the others who got rid of them. On to the main update. Steve found this post. Amy sent me screenshots. Not sure how to post them. Someone made a TikTok video and he saw it. Not super eventful, but something new on the old story. I considered deleting it to avoid the drama, but I decided instead to include everyone on the news if they'd like it. I may still delete it if it becomes too much. I just don't want to give him the power over me deleting it. I'm a little frazzled, honestly. Next story. I caught my husband with his best friend, but I won't tell them I know. Original post. My husband, male 28, is wealthy and is providing me, female 30, a great life while I'm studying. I would never have afforded it otherwise. As a matter of fact, I was a barista before I met him and didn't even dare dreaming about starting college. Now I'm in engineering school. He pays for everything. We have a great house. I don't need to do anything but study and have fun. His best friend, female 27 from college, separated from her common-law husband after he cheated on her. She had no place to go, and we have a guest house. I never had anything to worry about with them because they have known each other for ages. I always thought, if they wanted, it would have happened already. I was mistaken. I started having a hunch because of nothing in particular, just felt that they changed with each other. So I snuck on them after pretending to go to my mom's. Nobody knows that I know. But I couldn't let him touch me for two months, blaming it on the stress from school starting. Now we do get intimate because I don't want him to suspect me or get tired of me. I cried the first time it touched me after I found out. I wanted to vomit, but I blamed it on stress. Now I just let him. 
I try to think about other things and try to convince myself that is just physical. I fake it sometimes when he notices me being absent-minded and starts saying, "Baby, come back to me." I'm in a race with time to finish school before he throws me aside for her. I also had IUD in without telling him. Nobody knows, not even my closest friends. Everyone thinks I'm the luckiest woman on earth, so loved and cherished by an amazing, successful husband. Nobody knows that I cry myself to sleep every night. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Wow, I'm so sorry. Thank you. It feels good to tell someone. So do you have an exit plan? Finish school and move to another city. Please be putting money aside as well. You need a nest egg to begin your new life. Other than that, so sorry this happened to you, and best wishes for a fabulous new life. So, this woman leaves her husband because he cheated, and then turns around and is your husband's mistress. What? I'm so so sorry. Send all the positivity your way that I can. I kind of wonder if the mistress's ex actually cheated, or if they divorced because of something she did. And she's just saying that to make herself look better, like maybe the ex caught her cheating by walking in on her or something, but doesn't have proof, and he decided to divorce her. But maybe then she decided to get a word out first that it was the other way around, and that he was the one who cheated, so that no one would believe him when he truthfully said that she cheated on him. That would explain why she's comfortable being someone's mistress now, despite supposedly having been cheated on. Who knows though? For the sake of your education, stay. Try to be strong during those three years. Once you can stand on your own feet, leave this man, and don't feel guilty about taking advantage of his money. He's literally cheated on you and still calls you baby. For God's sake, you deserve to get this degree and leave us in faithful butt. Yes, he still calls me baby. Tells me love you every morning when I go to college and he to work. Text me and miss you from his morning meeting. Calls during lunch and texts what I want for dinner before coming home. Like nothing has changed. I can't believe how he can be so two-faced. Is she still in a guest house? Yes. I don't think she's going to leave anytime soon. But she's talking about getting back with her husband if he proposed. Three years is a long time. I can understand why you're holding out, but your description of your intimate life made me so uncomfortable. I wish you strength, OP. Please remember that nothing is worth your mental health or your sanity. Take stock every few months, reevaluate where you are, and reconsider your options. It may be worth talking to a divorce lawyer so you can weigh up your options. You may be eligible for alimony and might not need to stay with them to continue your education. Are there any grants or scholarships you're entitled to? Please look into other options too. Yeah, I would not underestimate at all what this could do to someone's mental health. This is the sort of thing that can leave long-lasting trauma effects on your nervous system, and that sort of stuff can then take a long time to heal from. And now for the update. Hi everyone. I'm overwhelmed by the people who reached out to me and thank you for all the advice. I might have done something very petty last Tuesday, and I still don't know how to feel about what I did and what good it did. Actually, no good at all. But I think the comments here triggered something inside me that told me to stop hiding. I will have to wait and see if I blew up my future. God, I hope I didn't. As I said before, maybe not in the post, but in the comments that my husband's friend was trying to reconcile with her husband. She invited him for dinner in her guest house, and after dinner, they asked if they could join us for wine. And my husband was happy to invite them. They stayed for about two hours, and I had a lot to drink and wasn't talking a lot. When they came to the subject of reconciliation, I don't know what came over me, but I just mumbled, "Good." I'm happy you two are getting back together, so she stops betting my husband. It didn't go well afterwards. My husband looked at me in shock, and I asked him if he thought I didn't know. I've known for months. The friend's husband kept asking, "Is this true? Are you serious? I can't believe you." My husband started crying, and the friend started shouting, "You witch!" and apologizing to her husband. When her husband left in anger, she rounded on me to yell some more. I told my husband that I was going to bed, and when I wake up tomorrow, I want her to be gone or I'm gone. I left them in the kitchen. I heard them yelling. Yesterday she was gone. My husband wanted to talk and explain that it was nothing. He never meant to hurt me. He was so stupid not connecting the dots when my mental health was deteriorating. She meant nothing, and he regrets it. 
He told me that he wanted to make it up to me and start couples therapy because we love each other. And we can overcome this with some help. So now he thinks we are going to work on our marriage. I don't know when he's gonna call my bluff or what happens when his friend is officially single. As I heard that her husband has asked for separation of assets. I hope I didn't ruin everything because of one drunken mistake. You didn't ruin anything? They both ruined your marriage and hers. It's great he wants couples counseling, but you have a right to deny it. I wish you the best of luck. We'll see how much I've ruined. He has moved out to the guest house now because I told him I needed space. I can't control my emotions anymore. They ruined her marriage as well as yours for being a bunch of selfish idiots. It's amazing how you can blame yourself and the fact that you do and worry about the damage you may have caused for telling the truth about what they were doing behind your back tells me you're a good person who probably doesn't stand up for herself enough. Huh, that was awesome. I hate when cheaters say it's meant nothing when that nothing was worth risking their entire marriage and shattering their spouse's heart. Him and his regrets can kick rocks. I think it hurts more when it means nothing. If my husband is going to destroy our relationship, I want it to be for his true love. I think it would be a little easier to accept and move on. I totally disagree with this. And I'm astonished that this is the general consensus here. Why? You really think I would feel better if it means something? Sorry, honey. I cheated on you, but it meant nothing. Sorry, honey. I cheated on you, but it meant so much to me. Yeah, no. I think what they were trying to say is that it's like him saying he broke your heart and betrayed you for no reason. Because it didn't mean anything or it meant nothing, he destroyed your relationship literally over nothing. Which is another way of saying he cared about a relationship less than nothing. Because at least if it was for a good reason like love, that would mean he at least cared about your guy's relationship and had a reason, no matter how crappy the reason is. But to do it for no reason? It's just cruel. 